Welcome back to my channel. My name is Bianca and I am a mindset and business coach. So today we're going to be talking about three ways to let go and let God. Now, I want to share with you that this is not something that has been easy for me. It's something that I have had to learn with years and years and years of trials and tribulations. And I feel like I have finally gotten to that point where I have the wisdom and I am building that relationship with God to actually be able to say, okay, I know how to let go and let God. But it's also something that I practice on a daily basis and it takes time and it is something that I am still working on. So I hope that this video will encourage you today these are tips that I have found to be helpful, and I'm sure they will be beneficial to you as well. So, tip number one. Today, I want you to really focus on your prayer life. So, prayer is something that has become really essential in my day, and it isn't just one point of the day. It's literally all throughout the day. So I want to encourage you to incorporate prayer into your daily routine. I highly recommend starting your day with prayer and ending it with prayer as well. But prayer is not something that has to be done a specific way. I literally talk to God as if I'm talking to one of my friends or my family members. And so I'm really honest and I share my feelings. It's a safe space where I feel like I can go to my Heavenly Father and share with Him what's on my heart, what's on my mind, whether it's negative, positive. Um, it's just an honest and open conversation about how I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing, what it is that I want, my desires, and what I would like to see happen in my life. And it's something that there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's no right or wrong time. I literally will be in the grocery store or driving or <laughs> cleaning my house, um, taking a shower. Those are times that I have found to be really powerful for my prayer time. And it's something that now has become a routine. We know that it takes, what is it, 14, 21 days? I think it's 14 days to form a habit. And so you just have to keep it up. And then it just becomes part of your norm. So having a prayer life is very, very important. I will also say that part of that is also meditating. So you don't want to just pray and then leave it at that, which is what I used to do. I would pray and then go about my day, go about my business. You want to make sure that you have prayer time, but then you're meditating afterwards as well. Because the prayer time is your opportunity to do the talking but just like in any relationship, you need to give the other person an opportunity to speak as well. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have your prayer time. And then immediately after, I like to sit there and reflect. I'm still and I listen to that quiet voice that I feel in my spirit or some people say in their head. Um, so I really am intentional about setting aside some time to not only pray, but then to listen to what God has to say to me. So I'm listening to him to see what way he's guiding me. Um, if I asked questions or I was asking for something specific or asking for guidance or for him to order my steps, I need to give him the opportunity to, to talk to me. And um, that's something that I have not always felt like I was able to do. You have to definitely, just like any time you're meditating, be able to quiet your mind and you wanna be in a quiet space and quiet um, environment. So you don't wanna have a lot of things going on. Make sure you silence your phone. Make sure you let your friends and family know if there's anyone in your area or in the home that you are taking time to pray and meditate and you don't wanna be distracted. So. That is what I have found to be my number one tip in terms of what works for me for letting go and letting God. Now, the second thing that I will say, and if you guys see me looking in different directions, I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> I'm still getting used to um, sharing these informational, valuable videos with you. So just bear with me, I will get there. But anyway, so tip number two. Number two is having trust 
in God and building faith. So any part of building a relationship, whether it's in business or your personal life, you have to build that trust and faith. Well, how do you do that? For me, there's two ways that I do this, and that's through reading the word. So you read the word and you study the word and then you learn his promises. In order to build a relationship with someone, you have to spend time with them and you want to know that you can trust him with whatever it is you're bringing to him, right? So in order to do that, you've got to get into the word and study it and have an understanding of what he promises us. And then from there, you want to have that, start building that faith. And how do you build the faith? Well, what I like to do is I found journaling to be really helpful and you want to write down your past experiences. So sometimes when, when we're in the middle of something in our life in the middle of what I call a storm it's not always easy to remember and reflect on what he has previously done for us but I know personally if I look back on my life there have been so many times where I was going through something and I felt like there was no way out or there was no way that things were going to work out there was no end there was no light at the end of the tunnel and that just wasn't the case it wasn't true and that was my mind um, my negative thoughts telling me that. And so it's really important to actually be able to write down and document those things that you've experienced so that you can go back to them and reflect on what actually happened. And those serve as reminders in terms of saying to yourself, okay, this is, I, I've got the faith. I know that everything is going to be okay because I've been in this place before and this is what happened. This is how God provided for me or this is how God saw me through. This is how I was able to get through that situation through the grace of God. So that's my number two tip. Number three is the practice of letting go. So something that I love to do is, again, I will journal out all those negative thoughts and then I get rid of it. So I will literally rip the paper up or I have even burnt it sometimes. But it's the practice of you sitting there saying, OK, I'm acknowledging this is how I'm feeling. Same thing with your feelings, even if you don't write it out to just sit in a space and just allow yourself to be, allow yourself to feel what you feel and to go through it, but then say, okay, we've had enough time for that. Now we're going to push through. And also sometimes it's helpful to visualize as if you are literally taking those burdens, taking that weight off of your shoulders and you're giving it to God, you're handing it over to him. So in your head, visualize you walking up to him and handing him over all of the things that are worrying you and making you feel anxious. Because then you visualizing that, you're visualizing yourself, you're seeing yourself hand it over and it's a way for you to actually feel like that's what's happening. And so I think that is something that, again, the more you practice these strategies, the better you're going to get at it. You want to get to the point where now this is your go-to. When you are faced with a trial and a tribulation, you're automatically saying to yourself, I know God's got this. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let God and he's going to handle it for me. So those are my top three tips in terms of letting go and letting God. I hope that is helpful for you. I know for me, they have been tremendous on my journey. And again, just be patient with yourself and know that it takes time. It takes repetition. You've got to work at these things and be consistent. And it's always great to have an accountability, someone, accountability partner, someone that you can work on these things with, building that faith, building that trust with God. And know that if you don't physically have an accountability partner, you always have God. Go to him and pray to him and ask him to heal the areas that you need healed and to work on strengthening the areas that you need strengthened. And I promise you, he will always come through. All right, if you liked this content, if you found it helpful, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.